Refresh and refuel Wednesday. Listen, are you glad? Are you excited? Listen, I'm glad. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm just happy to be with you here on tonight. Um, you know, it's getting closer and closer to the Christmas uh, holiday. And um, just so happy and glad to be with you tonight. Um, if you would, let's like, let's love and share. Okay? Love and share. And let's get the peeps on. For Bible study tonight, I hope you got your Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got your Bible. Hope you got your notebook, your pen. Let's get started. If you are um, at a game or something, or you know, you're driving or whatever, just listen closely. Okay, you can go back and review it because that's all always is recorded, 
And so it will um, give you an opportunity to go back and, and, and review it later, okay? All right, so let's dive in this tonight. Let's dive in tonight. Let's pray. And we're going to dive into a, tonight to our lesson tonight, okay? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you for it is another opportunity that you've allowed us, God, to gather together virtually to give your name praise, to glorify you. God, you are so wonderful. You are so awesome in all of your ways, God. And we just thank you tonight for this opportunity to come and just to um, hear your word tonight. Father, I pray now that you decrease me and God, that you increase to the fullest, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. God, I relinquish my will to your will. God, that you will use me as a vessel of you to get to get for your people to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying on tonight. Father, we thank you for each and every house that hold that is represented here tonight. And God, we just ask you just to have your thine own way. God, have your way, have your way, let your spirit just, just rest, rule, and abide with us wherever we are. If it's in our car, if it's in, the, it's in the house, God, we just thank you and we ask your spirit to have its way, oh God, on Bible study tonight. God, your word says that he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. So God, we open up our ears, we open up our eyes, we open up our hearts to receive what thus says the Lord for us concerning our life in this season for this time. And we thank you for it. It's in Jesus' mighty and magnificent name we do pray. And the people of God said, amen, 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 amen. As you come in the room, say hello to me. Good, good evening, good evening. Say hello, amen. And 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 if you're a guest, just let us know where you're visiting from, um, you know, and um, God bless you and thank you for visiting with us tonight for um, being with us in Bible study between Christ United members. Say hello to our guests and visitors and let's get our people in, in the room if they're not already in here. Love and share this, okay? Love and share it. Love and share it for me. Love and share it, okay? Love and share it. All right. All right, beloved. Let's, let's, let's dive in tonight. Let's dive in. I'm going to give you a little bit of, um, um, recapping, um, but we want to dive into where God is taking us on tonight. All right. So we know that we have been talking about preparing for the promise, our, um, December sermon, uh, I can't say sermon, I can't, I, I, our December series have been talking about preparing for the promise, preparing for the promise. We've got to be prepared. We got to get in position to where we are prepared for what God has for us. Because truly, as you often hear it and say, it, what God has for you, it is for you. However, you must be prepared. You must prepare. You must be prepared for what God has for you. We talked about, you know, preparation is the process of making ready. You've got to make yourself ready. You got to make yourself um, um, ready to receive what God has for you. And in making yourself ready, we talked about this. We talked about um, preparing our thoughts. You got to prepare your thoughts. Yep. And you got to be open and, 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 and ready to receive um, wisdom and knowledge and, you know, some instruction and teaching. Just being sober minded, um, you know, being stable, being being ready to receive, open to to lessons and open to be taught. OK, and you got to set your hopes on God. Don't set your hopes on man. Man will deceive you. Man will will let you down. Man will, you know, man get caught up. And so man gets, you know, uh, they stray away sometimes. But you love it have got to prepare your thoughts, come with a sober mind, and set your hopes on God, all right? In doing all of this, we can be prepared, okay? We can we can prepare, uh, we are prepared um, for what God is about to do, all right? The other thing I want to tell you, um, or the other thing that we want to refresh that we went over last week, and I, I believe last week was a great lesson. Last week was a great opportunity. God just came and he just, um, you know, he just, whoo, God, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm still, 
I'm still feasting off of that. If you didn't, you wasn't here last week and you didn't watch Bible study lesson last week, go back and watch it because I'm still just feasting off that. I, I had to listen to it earlier today. So, uh, it, it, you know, it, God is, is doing great things. We talked about bold promises on last week. Bold promises. Our God, we, when we prepare ourselves, we're preparing ourselves for the promises of God. And we understand that God doesn't make just any old promises, but he makes big and bold promises. He makes big and bold promises. And we understand that if we are in him, Glory to God. We receive those promises. Everything, the promises of God, they are in Christ Jesus. We don't receive anything outside of, 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 of what is in him because we have been seated into heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We are, we are spiritual beings. We are, we are the create, we are a creation of him. And because we gave our life to Christ, because we, we came into relationship with him, we're no longer dead, but we are alive and we have arisen with Christ. And so we understand that it all works and it all is, um, um, it, it manifests when we are in Christ because to, by ourselves, we, we can't do anything by ourselves. We are powerless, but in him, in him, scripture says it's in him. We live, move and have our being. So it's in him that we receive and we obtain all of what we need to in order to progress and move forward. All right. So, um, you know, in Genesis 17 and 8, Genesis 17 and 8, we were talking about, you know, last week that we left off at the point where um, the scripture says that, that the, the blessings of Lord is not just for us, but it is for our seeds as well as our seed seeds to enjoy. And so we understand that. We understand that God, he fills us up. And I've given to you this. I've given you this illustration before. God fills us up, and the overflow is for those around us. We must be filled. Hmm? The blessings of the Lord will fill us. Glory to God. And then He said, "I'll pour you out a blessing that shall not be room enough to receive." So it's already in the equation that we won't have room enough to receive. Well, who is supposed to, else is supposed to receive that? Your children. Your children's children, your children, 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 children. Okay, that's that's what the overflow is for. For it to continue on. God is so big and He's so bold. His promises are so big. His promises are so bold that it's just not for your enjoyment, but it's also for the enjoyment of others. All right, we got it. Okay, so again, we are in the. Preparing for the Promise series, okay? Preparing for the Promise series. Our scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm going to put it on the screen for you tonight. Look at God. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. All right. And here it goes. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. King James Version says, For all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of what? Unto the glory of what? Of God by what? By us. Unto the glory of God by us. Let me give it to you from the NIV version, okay? NIV version says it like this, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us. Let me, let me, let me, let me double screen this for you real quick. Okay. I want to double screen this for you. This is where we are. This is what we're talking about. The promises preparing for the promise. And this is our focus scripture for this month. Okay. Now, explaining this, we also understand that the promises of God, his promises concerning us 
are yes and amen. Christ does not. I repeat, he does not lie. He has no reason to lie to us. And so therefore, no matter how many promises God has made, no matter what God has said, no matter how many times he has said it to you, no matter if it's a repeated thing or if it's something new, no matter, it does not matter. It is still yes and in him. Read it, read it, read it. It says, in Christ, amen. So, only thing that God needs for us to do is to say amen. Amen is a confirmation. Amen is a, 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 an agreement. Not that really God needs your um, permission, but he needs your agreeance with him in order for him to fulfill the promise. What am I saying? What do you mean? God gives us free will. We have the right, and I told you, um, I think last week, we talked about it last week, that we have a choice in the matter. God does not impose his will upon us. He does not enforce us to do something. He allows us choices. He allows us the opportunity. That's how we make error. If, if, he, if he didn't allow us to make choices, we wouldn't make errors. We wouldn't make, um, you know, bad decisions. But that's what he does because he is a God who wants you to want him. I don't want you to... God just saying, I don't want you to just just um, 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 be with me because this is this is all that you have. You know, this is you 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 need me. I want you to want me. There is a difference. Ooh, there is a difference. God wants us to want Him, not just want Him as we talked about last week, having a friend with benefits. No, God wants a relationship with us. So He gives us choices. He gives us opportunities to accept. The promises of God concerning us. And when we accept it, God says, all I need you to do is to say amen. Woo. I don't need you to do nothing else. I don't need you to say nothing else. I don't need you to act a certain way. I just need your, your permission. And amen is God's permission to do what he needs to do within our life. Amen. No matter how many promises, they are still yes in Christ. If you're in him, you're able to receive those promises in Christ. And through him, all he wants you to do is to give him a amen. Can I get an amen? Hmm. Can I get an A to the me? Huh? All right. So we're moving on. Here we are tonight with... Um, the other part of this, part three, all right, um, part three. I want to actually continue with um, part two a little bit, okay? Just bear with me tonight. I'm going to get to part three, okay? It's not going to be long, not going to be over, but I want to conclude part two, okay? Part two was talking about, you know, the bold promises. In the text, uh, beloved, Genesis 17 and 8, as you read through the story, we were talking about the children of Israel, okay? We're talking about the children of Israel and, uh, you know, Abraham's descendants. God gave a, a bold um, promise to Abraham about opening Sarah's, uh, giving Sarah a baby and, you know, Abraham fathering a child at, at, at an old age. And, and God did it. It was bold and it was... Um, a promise that God had made to them in him. Catch that, all right? To them in him. Now, let's look here. When we talk about uh, the promises of God, when we talk about the, um, what is it? Um, the promised land, when we talk about the children of Israel and how he said that God said that I'm, you know, I'm going to take you to a place called the promises, promised land. The promised land, a place that is prepared for you where, um, you know, um, for milk and honey, the, 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 the promised land, the, the place that I have prepared for you. But you got to be ready, prepared in order to possess that place. You got to be ready in order to get in there, get, get there, get there. So let's talk about it. Promised land is a place of promise. Let me find this Scripture. One second. Promise land. All right. So, 
promised land, okay? We're talking about um, the, the, the ending of last week's, okay? We're talking about the promised land. Now, go with me for a second. The promised land, beloved, is a place of promise. The Lord was telling, you know, the children of Israel that I, I prepared a place for you. That I, there, There's a place that you'll go. There's a land flowing with milk and honey. You know, there's a place that you're going to go. Let's, let's pull up that scripture real quick. He told them that there's a place uh, flowing with milk and honey. All right. Let me go here. Give it to you. All right. Here we go. So he says, so I have come down to rescue them from the land, from the hand of the Egyptians. This is God talking to the children of Israel and to bring them out of the land of that land in a good into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites and the Hanites, Amorites, Autumnites, okay, Ites, Autumnites. But if, I want to focus here. He says that on, on, on the A part of, of the A and the B part of um, this verse. And you can see, you know, sometimes when a preacher says that the A part of this or the A part of that, you know, here it is right here in, in, in the NIV version breaks it down for you. It tells you the A, you know, A part of this verse, the B part of this verse, the C part. If you don't have an NIV version, I encourage you to get one um, because you'll see what I'm saying. It breaks it down even more for you. Okay. It says, so I have come. God has come, and he says to rescue, first of all, he said to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land, uh, out of, out, out of that land into a good and spacious land. B part of that says a land flowing with milk and honey. First of all, let's go, let's go, let's, let's deal with the A clause of this, Okay. The A clause is that the promised land is a promised place. The promised land is, is good and it's a spacious place. It, it, there is, in, in other words, what I'm trying to get you to visualize is that where God is taking you, it is all good and there is plentiful in this place. Did you hear me? Good and spacious. It is all good where you're going, and it is plentiful. It, it, it is in abundance. This is a place where there is abundance. There is a place, the promised land is a place where there is abundance. It is a place where there is everything. There is wholeness, you know, in your in your in your, your health, wholeness in your finance, wholeness in your family. There is wholeness in all areas of your life. This is what he's referring to when he's saying the promise that everything is good. All is gonna be well in this land. I'm taking you to a place where there is going to be all as well as well as as abundance in this land. This is what he's referring to when he's talking about the promised land. The promised land is a place. Look at the B clause. He says a land flowing with milk and honey. Now, let's talk about this milk and honey thing. Why does he describe this land as a place flowing with milk and honey? I'm 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 not quite honest. Let me I'm not quite understand. Let me help you. He says, a place flowing with milk and honey. Think about milk and honey. Hmm? Let's, let's just think about milk and honey. All right? Milk and honey. The physical location to where he was taking them was a, was a place called Canaan. All right? Canaan was good. It, it flowed in the abundance. I mean, everything was good in that area. Everything that they could possibly think of was there in the abundance in that area. God wants to take you to a spiritual place of abundance, of good. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, follow me. Why does he call it flowing? How does he say a land flowing with milk and honey? First of all, let's analyze these words. I like, I like defining stuff, you know what I'm saying? So let's define these words. A land flowing. Okay, I already said it is spacious. It's 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 a it's a land. It's it is a it is a a a, a property. Hear feel, hear me in the in the spiritual. Okay, I'm not saying a physical 
property, but I'm talking about property where it is yours of possession. Hear me. Come on. Hear me now. It is yours of possession. Where in your possession, there shall be a flow, a, a gush, a, a continuous flowing. Because it says flowing, continuous flowing. You, you, you'll be in this space. You will take property and possession over this, over this space. And there will be a consistent flow. There will be a consistent gush. There will be consistency in this area. Then he says, with milk. And not just flowing with anything. He could have said flowing with water. Water is good for you. But you need a little bit more than just water. Hmm? He says milk and honey. Hmm. Let's think about it. Milk. What does milk, milk do? For a baby, milk provides them with the nutrition nutritions that they need in order to grow. Now, you know, I have my picks. I have my, my, um, you know, pre preferences and my preference, you know, for a baby is, you know, mother's milk. Okay. Now, when we think about a baby and milk, his or her mother's milk, there are so many nutritions in that milk. There's so many minerals in that milk. There's so many vitamins. There are so many antibodies. Ooh, catch this. Catch this. There are so many antibodies in a, a, a mother's milk that allows the child to be able to fight off anything that may come to harm them. But wait a minute, Bishop. You done said it's going to be a good place. You said it's going to be. And this is why it's a good place. Because every part of this is good. It is, it is a place where, where even if something, even if the devil was saying, I'm seeking somebody I could devour. And he says, well, go test them over there in the land of Canaan. And the land and the place that they have, you know, taken possession of. And they have taken authority over. Even if he does say that. God is saying, I have placed you in a position to where you are receiving milk, the antibodies. Therefore, nothing that comes your way can harm you. Ooh, yes. It says, I have placed you and I've given you milk. So all the nutrition that you need, all the vitamins that you that you could ever, ever think of, every antibody that could fight off any matter of disease, illness, anything, it is right there in the milk. A place, a land, place, uh, a possession, place of, of authority where milk is, all the nutrition and the antibodies that I would need for anything. Then he don't just stop there. He says, honey. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, 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 mm. Honey. Why does he say honey, Bishop? Okay, hold on, I'm going to tell you. Honey. Honey. Now, most people add honey and tea. You know, honey is that, that natural sweetener. That 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 natural um, added in incentive. I, I've got the milk. The milk is good. The milk is going to you know give me nutrition and it's going to give me antibodies to fight off. But then he gives you an active, a added incentive, a added incentive, a, a added sweetener. Uh, honey ain't fat. Honey got vitamins in it. Honey has minerals in it either. So whatever you don't get from the milk, he he added <laughs> the honey for you. Come, come on here, somebody. Uh, uh, honey is good for your heart. Uh, in case you need to get some things together still in your heart. He says, I'm, I'm putting honey on that. Huh? It, it helps promote burns, things that come to hurt you and harm you. He put honey on it and it help, help to soothe the burn. It's a wound healer. It's, it, 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 it fortifies your heart. It, it heals your wounds. 
He gives you milk. But he also gives you a added incentive that has more nutrients, more um, um, minerals and, and vitamins and, 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 and good for your heart. He gives you this in the land. And, and it's not just one time you're good. It is a continuous flow. You ever seen a stream? A stream? And the stream continues to flow. Hmm. God says that I'm giving you a continuous flow of whatever it is that you're needing in this next season. I'm speaking prophetically to somebody right now. I says, I'm, I'm not just going to bless you one time and that be it. No, I'm taking you to a place. I'm, I'm putting you in charge of, I'm giving you authority of a continuous flow of the nutritions and the vitamins and an extra added incentive to what you are needing in this season. It's going to be continuous. You'll never be at lack. You'll never be uh, uh, um, um, at, 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 at lack or, or starving or, or suffering because it's going to be continuous. Even, even, even if you don't need it. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, even if you don't need it at the time, it's still flowing. It's still coming. And so even if I'm full, my extra, it flows over to everybody. Oh, it flows over to everybody else around me. God is taking you to a place, the promised land, spiritually in your in your in your spiritually as well as the physical. He's gonna shift you. He's gonna give you authority. He's gonna position you where where you have possession and authority over up over this over this land, this place, and in that land, in that place, there is gonna be a flow. Ooh, flow of milk, flow of honey. Good God Almighty, hallelujah. I'm, I'm just in awe of what God is saying. If, if you in awe, come on, if, if, it, if this is getting to you and you, you feel what I'm feeling now, come on, just give me some hearts. Give me some hearts. Give me some hearts on the screen. Look here. Let's go to the scripture right here real quick. Let's go to the scripture right here real quick. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Promised land. Hallelujah. When we talk about bold promises, okay, we understand that, you know, he, he'll, he'll allow us to take possession of, allow us to take, um, you know, authority of that which, you know, we need to. He'll allow us to do that. Not only will he, he allow us to do this, um, but you have to understand that he will flow in the promises of God. The promises of God, the scripture says, let me show you. Scripture says here that the promises of God, the, the blessings of the Lord bringeth wealth without painful toil or for it. This is the NIV version. The, the King James version says, um, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and adds no sorrow. Okay? Make it rich and adds no sorrow. And so God is saying that my promises, when I bring you into this place of possession, where it's a constant flow of milk and the added incentive of honey. <laughs> Good God. If you only saw what I see right now. Ooh, bless God. He says that that you got to understand, my, I'm going to bring you to this place. But when I bring it to you, there is not going to be a, a, a position or state where you're going to have to work hard for it. You're going to have to suffer and toil for this. Yeah, work hard. You might, you know, whatever. But suffering and toiling, no. Those days are over with. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. The blessings of the Lord brings wealth without painful toil for it. You're not going to have to struggle with this. You're not going to have to struggle out in this because he says there's a constant flow. Woo! If you only know... How, how I see this, how God is just showing me this. 
It's a constant flow. It's a constant flow. It's a constant flow. It's a constant. Whew. Constant flow. Constant flow. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on. You'll get it later. If you ain't got it right now, you'll get it later. Okay? You'll get it later. Here we are. Again, we're going to our next... Um, what we what we were supposed what we are to cover this week, okay? I need you to know that not only is God preparing you for something, but He's preparing you for a bold something. All right, and for some of you, um, it's going to feel like you're in a um, space where still yet. Thing you haven't been able really to possess what it is that God has for you. So let's talk about that real quick. You're going to be in a season of preparation, okay? All right. Um, bold promises. He's preparing you. He's giving you bold promises. But now you're in a season of preparation, okay? You're in a season of preparation what does that mean all right let's talk about it if we if we look back at the scripture with the children of Israel they were in the wilderness because they were not ready yet to possess the land that was flowing with milk and honey they weren't ready to take possession of it they weren't ready to take authority over that because they still had some matters in their heart that were not yet resolved. How do we know that? It's because when they got in there, this was only supposed to be a four-day journey. This was only supposed to be a four-day journey. Some of the things that you're going through, and let's just talk about it. Not pointing the fingers, not you know trying to you know beat you up, you know what I'm saying? But let's talk about it. Some of the things that we go through, beloved, we go through because God is trying to prepare us for something better. But we're not ready for the preparation. We don't want to go through the process. We talked about this um, the, the other Sunday, going through the process. We're not ready to be prepared for it. Children of Israel wasn't ready to be prepared. They, they didn't want to go through the process. It was supposed to take four days. It ended up taking 40 <laughs> years. All because they refused to submit to the process. Beloved, don't, don't refuse to submit to your process. And God have to have, have your blessing on hold because you refuse to learn the lessons. Hmm. Let me say it again. Don't refuse to submit to the process. And God has your blessings on hold. Because you haven't yet submitted to the process that he is putting you through. Submit through the process. Grow in the process. Learn in the process. Humble yourselves in the process. The children of Israel, they weren't humble. They still was all about them and what they wanted. And God was steady blessing. He was steady taking care of them. But they couldn't see that. They wanted more. They became to be real greedy and real, um, you know, adamant and like, oh God, you know, how he gonna put us out here? And we, how, why, why won't God put you in something when He understands that you can do it? It's about of a test. He, but Scripture says He won't put no more on, on us than we can bear. If He put you in it, He understands that you're able to deal with it. He's, he understands that you can handle what he has put you in. Or, better yet, he's testing you to see if you can handle what he has put you in. He 
here we are. Here we are. Season of preparation. When God gets ready to do something in your life, he puts you in a season of preparation. What does the season of preparation do? First of all, beloved, it prepares and it develops your character. You ever heard your mom ever said, your butt gonna write you a check, your mouth gonna write you a check, your butt can't cash? Sometimes our mouths get us in situations that our character can't handle. Sometimes we just got to sit down, chill out, and let character be built within us. If the children of Israel would have let character be built within them, guess what? They would have they would not have been complaining. Character development. They would have not have been complaining. What they would have done? Okay, God has taken us through this for a reason. You know, we're going to learn through this and we're going to go for it. Remember, we're, we're just passing through. Come on now. They were just passing through. We're just passing through. This is not, this is not the promised land. This ain't, this ain't what he promised. So this is just a period of passing through. So while I'm passing through, I'm going to let him develop me, develop my character. If I need a little bit more patience... He's giving me patience to wait. Huh? If I need if I need to be able to, to communicate more and to to you know to 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 express myself more. God, I love you. God, you know, God, um, can we talk? What's what's going on? Can you help me understand what I'm going through? What is this? God, I'm grateful. I just want understanding. Huh? Character development. You can't be a liar and going into the promised land. You can't be a cheater and going into the promised land. Come on now. You have got to be fully devoted and fully persuaded that what God is giving to you, it is from God and that you really appreciate what he is doing for you. Where's your heart at? Character development. Where is your heart? Hmm? Then in the season of preparation, he's giving, he's developing, or he's he's taking you through a series. Um, in this season, you will be you. It is it is with hopes that you will be into you'll have more intimacy with God. Have more intimacy with God, because sometimes these things are going to get difficult. Hmm? Sometimes the road is going to get hard. Sometimes the road is going to get rough. And you're going to have to get to a place where we just fall down on our knees and say, God, what is this? God, I trust you. Help me to see you in this. God, show me your way. Show me your will. God, I want to I wanna be pleasing to you. Help me in this. The season to enhance your intimacy with God enhance and, and show God that you really trust him and not uh, yourselves. Hmm? I, God, I trust you. I love you. It's hard right now, but God, I still love you because I understand that you got to be taking me through something. Sometimes we look at the glass as half full or we can look at the glass as half empty. What are you looking at your glass as? Half full or half empty? Half full says, you know, God, I, it's getting a little rough right now, but I know you are doing this for a purpose. Or you can look at it as half empty. God, I, I got to go through this. Why, I, why I'm doing through this again? Huh? The season of preparation is to build your character, character development, and enhance your intimacy with God. And it also is to burn away hindrances. Is a place and is a season where hindrances are burnt away. Why do we say hindrances are burnt away? What do you mean? What are you talking about, Bishop? Okay. Hindrances are burnt away. In this state, God is putting you through some things, right? Some of us may feel like we're in the fire. 
what does fire do? Burn away all impurities. Anything that's impure, anything that 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 you know is is burnable, it is gonna burn. Okay, if you are a gem and God puts you into fire and he he presses you, he 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 puts you in uh, in the hottest of the hottest fire, you come out everything that's not supposed to be there, that's that's covering your shine. Ooh. <laughs> Hear me, it's covering up your shine. You know what I'm saying? You you got some bling bling in the middle, but all the mess that you've been through is covering up your shine. It's covering up, it's, it's bearing in you. God says that I'm taking you through a season where hindrances, all those things that, that have been laying on you and been burdening you. Remember, we talked about that before. Hmm? God, God has to dig and he has to dig and dig away and and, and because some of, there's a there's a living spring of water on the inside. And God has to get to that living spring of water on the inside so that the water and remove all that stuff away so that the water can flow again. And then when that water flows again, he puts up barriers, he puts up boundaries so that the dirt won't mix again with the water and bring make it unpure. God is burning away. Trust the process. He is burning away those hindrances that cause you to relapse, to go back, to that your, your, your diamond is dimmed. He burns that away. And when he's through burning, you come out, bling, bling, <laughs> shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> huh? That's what he does for you. That's what he does for you. So listen, he, 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 he develops your character. Mm -hmm. He develops your character. He, 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 it, it is in hopes it, or it is to develop or it is to enhance your intimacy. It is to burn away hindrances, all those excuses and all that stuff, all the past hurt, all the past pain. It's to burn away all of that. And lastly but not least, you got to know that it's all about divine timing. What you're going through it's all in God's time. It's not going to happen when you think it's going to happen. It's not always going to happen when you want it to happen. But in the process, you got to know that everything is working for your good. Every trial, every tribulation, every every time you have to get on your knees and cry, every time someone slaps you on one cheek and you have to turn the other, it is all for your good and it is all a part of what is developing you in this season of preparation. Divine timing. God will God will unleash. The blessing when you are really ready for it. Ooh, ooh. Mm, mm, mm. Let's look here now. Eight signs. We're going to close with this, okay? Eight signs that you're in a season of preparation. Eight signs that you're in a season of preparation. I hope you're writing this stuff down. Mm -hmm. Are y'all taking good notes? So y'all all right? Give me some hearts or something on the screen. Let me know you're okay. If you got any questions, go ahead and put them up. I'll answer. I'm talking to you all through um, through the the message box tonight, okay? So um, I won't call out anybody's name or anything like that, but I see you all and I'm, I'm talking to you, to you through the message box, all right? So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Go ahead and inbox me. All right. And let's let's talk about it tonight. All right. So let's go through these steps. All right. Let's go through these steps. I'm gonna double screen it so you can see me and I can see and also see the um the, the scriptures and some information, okay? All right, so here we go. All right, so this is how you know um, that you're in this season 
of preparation. Okay, this is how you know that you're in the season of preparation. This is what the season of preparation looks like. First of all, you got to know that God's promises never fail. Okay, these are some of these are some of the. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me let me go back. Yeah, let me go back. These are some of the promises of God. Okay, I want to go through the promises of God because when we talk about the promised land, I want to go make sure you understand what the promises of God are. Okay, so let me put it on the screen for you. What the promises of God are. All right, here it is. First of all, promises of God concerning us in, 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 in our daily life, no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through, that God's promises will never fail. You got to know the promises. Bold promises. These are some of the promises that God's make, God makes to us over and over again. God's promises will never fail. God is always good. God is always with us. God is faithful. Okay, you got to know these things and, and when you're dealing with things and when you're going through things, you got to know that these God never, not God said he never failed me. God is always good. God is always with me. God is always faithful. Not only that, but you also got to know that God is kind and passionate. God has designed me for purpose. He's, he's kind and compassionate. He has designed you for this. You were created for purpose. Okay. I know the process may not feel good, but guess what? He made you for it. You were you were made to 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 be on the place. This, now listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. You weren't made to have to suffer. Let me let me let me help you out with that. I'm not saying that you were made to suffer, but you were made to be a champion. And the only way that you can be a champion is that you go through some of the trials and the tribulations that you put in the fire, you're tested, you're tried. You, you were made a, to be a champion, but you've got to go through the test in order to become the champion. Does that make sense? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Give me some hearts, okay? Let's go. Let's continue to move on. Seven, it says, God loves me deeply no matter what. God, you got to know these are the promises of God that he loves you deeply no matter what. And God will give you power for your life. He won't just put you out there and let you be out there by yourself. No, he going to give you the power and the authority that you need for your life. Nine, it says, God presents, bring God's presence, bring us joy no matter whatever you're in, no matter whatever situation. If only the children of Israel could have understood these promises. Mm. His presence will bring you joy. You in the presence of God, but yet you complaining still. Come on, somebody. 10, God will fill me with to overflowing of hope. God will fill you with the overflowing of hope. 11, God will strengthen and help you. He won't leave you out there by yourself. Come on now. Huh? Then 12, God will give you wisdom. God's promises you an abundant life. These are the promises of God. God has a plan for your life. No matter what you go through, beloved, no matter what you may come your way, no matter what the trial or the tribulation is, you got to understand these promises. The promises of God are right, yes. All you have to do is say amen. I receive it. I, I, I accept it. Now, let's move to the signs, okay? I'm sorry about that. I was out of, I was out of it was out of order on my screen, so I missed it. But let me give you the signs that eight signs, okay? Eight signs that you may be in a season of preparation. Okay? Eight signs that you may be in a season of preparation. Okay? All right, here we go. The first one. Okay. The first sign that you might be in a season of preparation is your, when you begin to step into something new. All right. You're about to step into something new. That's the first sign that you are about to enter a season of preparation because you're about to step into something new. Okay. You're about to step into something new. And stepping into something new, God has to prepare you for the new. I know a lot of us think we're ready. We're, I'm ready. I'm ready now. Let's go. But God says, nah. 
let, let me make let me let me let me put you let me get you there a little bit further let me you know let me let me let me encourage you a little bit more let me move you a little bit further okay he he he's when you're about to step into something new this is an indication that you're in the season of preparation or you're about to enter the season of preparation second thing is that you probably had a dream about it you probably dreamed about it but yet it's like a continuous dream. Some people say deja vu. You see it, but yet you haven't yet entered it. You haven't not yet. You're not yet there. You're in a season of preparation. I saw it, but I don't see it. I saw it, but I don't see it. I always told somebody, if you can see yourself in your mind, if you can see yourself in the future, then you'll have it. But in seeing yourself, you also got to understand that God is now preparing you to order to possess it. Good God Almighty. Third thing that might be a sign that you're in a season of preparation. If you feel like you're stagnant, that you're, you know, you, 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 you just, I'm just, you know, I'm just here. I'm just, you know, I'm, I can't move forward. I can't move back, but I'm just, you know, it's like, ah, ah, you're in a season of preparation. Something is about to blow your mind. God is about to blow your mind. Something is about to happen. But you're in a season of preparation. In this season, beloved, don't worry. Don't fret. Don't get uh, weary in well-doing. If you faint not, you shall receive. Fourth thing. Fourth thing. It might be a sign that you're in a season of preparation. If you feel like you're in a holding pattern. Like you've been waiting forever. Like, God has done, show me this. He has done, you know, um, I, I, he, he's done promise. And I heard many prophets talk about this. God has done, show me this. But I haven't yet received it yet. It's not yet in my possession. Seems like you've been waiting forever. You're in a season of preparation. If you feel like you've been waiting forever, you're, you're stagnated, you, you dreamed about it, but you haven't yet possessed it, you, you're, you're about to step into something new, understand that you're in a season of preparation and you must prepare. Prepare your heart, prepare your mind, prepare yourselves for what is about to happen. Let it build character. Get closer to God. Uh, let God burn away those things that are, are layers and those things that have been covering your shine. And Understand it's going to happen in God's timing, but... You've got to get in position. You've got to get and get yourself in a state of, of I'm preparing for the next. Prophet spoke on this um, a couple of Sundays ago for the church's anniversary. It's in between the promise and the next. You're in a season of preparation. Ooh, God just brought that back to my remembrance. You're in a season of preparation. Here it is, beloved. Another sign. It is the fifth sign that you might be in a season of preparation. There's feels like there's no breakthrough. You've been praying, you've been fasting, but nothing has broken yet. You've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been praying, you've been fasting, you've been praying. You done asked others to pray with you, others to fast with you, and still yet nothing. Still in a season of preparation. Six. Six, you're a little confused. You begin to question decisions that you've made. I know I heard God say it, but why hasn't it come to pass yet? I know I, know I heard him say that. Am, am I hearing things? I, I know it was God. The prophet said it. Bishop said it. I know it was God. Did I hear wrong? Did I miss something? This is a sign. This is a sign six that, you know, you're in a season of preparation. Seven. Discouragement hits. Discouragement hits. This is when you have to, beloved, hear me. I know some of us, you know, we think we're so strong and we don't need nobody and we don't need no help. Beloved, you do. 
I pray for you. You pray for me. Together we'll watch God change things. If I see God blessing you, then that should be an encouragement for me that he's He's in the blessing business, that he's still working miracles, that he's still doing things. And so I ought, I ought to be encouraged and know that my blessing might be on the way now. When we come to church and we get into fellowship with others, you got to understand that you're not the only one going through stuff. You're not the only one dealing with things. But when you come to the church, you have an opportunity to, to release the tension, to release your emotions, and to just cry out before God. Be around other believers that maybe when you're down, they'll help to pick you up because of the energy that is in the room. But the Spirit of God that has, has entered and saturated the atmosphere. Don't stay where you are and let discouragement set in. Discouragement brings depression, and depression is not of God. Eighth, the eighth sign that you might be in a state or season of preparation. You feel stuck. Ain't going no way. I feel like I'm sinking or something. I just feel stuck. You're not stuck. God hasn't forgotten. It's all a part of his timing. You just have to be stay, be consistent. Stay under the word. Pastor Sean Jones said um, the Sunday before last for the pastor's anniversary to the leaders. She said, the, your next for this next season is in the mouth of your bleeder. This right here, this lesson here today is for many of you because you're struggling. You're in a state, you're in a season of preparation, but you don't, you didn't quite understand that until tonight. You didn't quite get that part until tonight. It, the light bulb didn't go on until tonight. And some of you, it might take a little bit longer. But every time I get up, every time I teach Bible study, every time I minister, every time I talk with you, God is giving me something for you if you only receive it. If you only will take it and let it minister to you and move you along in this season of preparation. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Let's move forward in the season of preparation. Listen, are there any questions for tonight? Any questions for tonight? I'm praying for you. I'm praying with you. God's got a blessing. We're lesson three, week three of our series, Preparing for the Promise. You already know that you got to prepare. You already know that God makes bold promises that only he can fulfill. That's how you know this from God, because only he can do it. I can't do it, Lord. And you know that now you're in a season of preparation. If you're going through any of these things, if you're feeling any of these type of way, and you know what that season is there to do. Build your character. Get you closer to God. Remove hindrances. Burn them out of your life. And understand that it is all a part of divine timing. No matter where you find yourself in life, and I'm going, understand that no matter how high you get, you'll still be looking up to God. <laughs> no matter how high you get, you'll still be looking up to God. So therefore, look up to him. Continue to look up him. It's good now, great, absolutely wonderful. Continue to look up to God when it's good. When it's bad, oh, that's not just the time that you ought to just fall on your knees and be calling everybody and want everybody to pray for you. No, let's do this all the time. 
Let's be in Bible study. Let's get the word of God. Let's, let's do what God has for us because it, 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 this is the will of God concerning us. Do you understand the assignment? Again, I say rejoice. <laughs> Give me some hearts on the screen if you're feeling all right tonight. Um, if you've had any questions, I've answered them in the comment box, okay? Or either I will send you a direct message, all right? All right. I love you all. We love you all. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, let's take this message, this lesson for tonight, and let's meditate on it. Go back and review it if you need to, okay? And let's, let's hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to come together, God, virtually, and to hear a word from you tonight. God, that is in on time for this season right now that many of us are in. Father, I pray, God, that the word that has been spoken tonight, that it will marinate and, and, and penetrate our hearts, God, so that we can build upon it. We can grow on the inside of us so that we understand that, God, it is all working for our good. This is nothing to hurt, harm, or hinder us, but it's all for the building of your kingdom, and that is us within us. God, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Bless those who are on tonight. Bless those that will watch this later. And God, we give you glory. We thank you, oh God, for all which you're doing. We thank you for considering us. Considering us strong enough. Considering us for the opportunities, God, that you have before us. We thank you for considering us. And we dare not complain about what it would take for us to possess what you have for us. But we give you praise, God. We give you glory. We bless your holy name. We worship you, God, because you thought so much of us to put us through the preparation process so that we can receive and possess the promise. Ooh, a place that's consistently flowing with milk and honey. God, we give you glory tonight. Bless us tonight, God, as we as we we leave from this 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 uh, um, um, development, this 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 scene, this 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 live, oh God, as we go out about our day, our our nightly activities tonight, God, let this word marinate and 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 and, and saturate our hearts and our minds so that we we can learn to praise you and not complain, learn to give you glory and not to be frustrated and aggravated, but know God that it's all a part of the process and in due season. We shall reap if we faint not. We give you glory. We thank you and we bless your name. Now, God, it is unto you who's able. God, we done prayed. We done, we done heard your word for the night. And God, it's up to you to move now. It's up to you to do now. It's up to you, oh God, as we, 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 we release our will and accept dying. We give it all to you. We leave it in your hands, knowing that you're more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. We thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 And amen. All right, beloved, make sure that you love and share, okay? Love and share this. Share this with your fellow brothers and sisters. Listen, we love you all. There's nothing you can do about it. We'll see you all tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. for uh, another episode of Good God's Morning. All right. Let's also remember, beloved, that our youth, our young people will still have their fellowship tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow night at six, at seven o'clock. I'm sorry. That's the wrong time. But it's tomorrow at seven o'clock. All right. They'll be on Zoom at 7 o'clock with the Fullers, okay? All right? All right. Well, we thank you so much for joining us tonight. And you all have a blessed and a beautiful evening. And we will see you tomorrow morning for Good God's Morning. And y'all have a blessed and a beautiful night, okay? All right. Stay blessed.